he he had an opportunity to come to um, Los Angeles um, um, gallery called Robert's Project for his first solo show in Major Break because he was recommended by Kehinde Wiley to the gallery. So he came down and it's like, no, I'm in the state. You have to come down. So that I said, yeah. So I, I took a day, I took some days off from work in FedEx and then I went for his opening and it was nice. So that's where I would say I first got a glance of like, oh, working with the gallery and how the market is. So whilst I was there, I was just like listening to a lot of you know, stuff that people are talking about. So it makes me kind of like, oh, this market is just different from what I thought it was back in Ghana. So the, after the show, he went back and later on, he was invited again to do a residency with Danny first, a Labria residency in Los Angeles. So again, he said he's in town and coming. I'm like, man, yeah, I'm working because I've taken a lot of like days off and they wouldn't allow me. It's like, well, I'll just come in because he's been showing my work to them. But they they wanted to like see something, me working on something before they believe they, they they didn't really get what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, just come in and then you, 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 I'll introduce you to these people. So I decided to straightforward quit my job. Okay. And then I, I went flew and then went to LA. So whilst we were there and he was working, he, he, he was nominated for some award in back in Vienna. So he had to travel back again to Vienna. And so whilst I was there, I bought a few, canvases and started working and painting my stuff again and that was when um, um one lady walking by the name Marianne Ibrahim from the Marianne Ibrahim gallery and then she saw my work and like I said she loved it and that like, she would like to buy it and I didn't even know how to price work because I'm used to pricing work as low because in Ghana people don't really have a lot of money to buy that kind of so I was like two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. So she asked me why and at then I've heard my friend talk about prices with their gallery. So I've I was kind of like, okay, why don't you mention those kind of like <laughs> prices? He was mentioning to the gallery. So I just like threw in some amount and I said, oh something like that, sell it for three thousand. And then the lady said I'll give you seven thousand. And I'm like, what? So I thought it was just choking and he took a check out of her bag and then signed it and gave it to me. And I wasn't even done with the painting, so I was surprised. So I got a little bit excited and then started like working on a different work again. And then the owner of the residency walked in and it's like, whose work is that? And I said, mine. It's like, he didn't know I was an artist because I was here for the opening and I never spoke that I was an artist. And I said, yeah, it wasn't a friend. It was a friend's show, so I didn't want to. And that was where I was painting. I remember I was painting a, a cowboy. And he saw the work and he said, I should practice or I should do more of this shot thing like a black cowboy because it's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so he said he liked that painting and would like to buy it. And then there, another person walked in. That was the Robert, the Robert Project Gallerist the dealer came in and like he also said that he was interested and if I work with any gallery and I said no so he was interested in working with me and he said it would take one of my piece work to Basel to show it and if it goes well and people will like respond where he will work with me so that's what we did and it took one piece and like people loved it and then that was where the break came through so I did I was given a residency to do and the guy the, the residents came in took a bunch of photo posted it on his timeline on Instagram and I was it. I grew up close to the coast. So most of my life was like just going to the coast and like hanging out around with friends a lot because Ghana is a community where you always hang around friends, you know, always like be around people and chat and, you know, just hang around. But yeah, growing up as a child, most of the thing that I did was play soccer because I wanted to be a soccer player, a professional soccer player. But I saw this lady one late afternoon with a huge square thing, like a stretcher. I didn't even know the name was called stretcher, but had it, it in, in the armpits like that. And I stopped her and I'm like, I want to see that because 
I recognize the canvas on the wood. Mm. And that is how I'm like, there, there must be art on this. So mm. I stopped her and I'm like, and I looked at what she has and then she turned it around and it was a beautiful landscape painted. It's like, and it, it looked different from what I used to do with a the movie theater and sometimes it, it looked more professional. Sure. So I asked her, like, is she an artist? And she said, yes. And I'm like, is there like a school for it? Or she she just like do, do this at home because I want to learn from her. And she sure. said, oh, sure. She can teach me, but there is a school for it too if I want to pursue that. And I said, yeah. And it was through that college that I met uh, my fellow artists now, like Amwakun and um, Francis Anna and then all the Ghanaian guys that are here now that are making big videos. Yeah, so that's the college that I met all of them. So we were in the same class together. Yeah, so. I love black and white images, black and white photos, my old grandma's photos, my old grandpa's photos. I always feel there is some sense of like rawness to it. And then it also gives you the focus on the image. I always feel like when the image has a lot of colors, it takes out the focus on what you really want to focus on. So I play with the balance of color and black and white. That is why I made my main subjects in the grayscale black and white, and also making reference to identity in terms of skin color. And, and that is how I balance it. So it's my love for black and white photograph and also talking about identity and skin color, even though our skin color is not as black like that and brown, but it's just my way of like, um, I'm showing that. I started to become more aware of myself Mm. which I have never been because, like I said, I woke up in Ghana, I just go about my daily life. I never have to think about where I'm going or how I should look or how I should talk. Sure. But when I got here, that is the thing that I started, like, realizing about myself. Like, I'm becoming more aware of these things and my surrounding and how I talk to people so that I don't get in trouble and stuff like that. So that is how it started changing. So my my subjects became more of, like, documenting certain group of people or documenting uh, an individual life and like what happens to them in their daily life and their identity and who they are as people. So that's how the work started shifting, started shifting to more social, political stuff more and more and more. Yeah, it starts with the photos and then and like I go through the photos at night. I pick what, what I think will best represent what I want to talk about and then um, I sketch it with pencil because it's going through the drawing. The, the reason why I sketch with pencil first was I like to edit whilst I'm sketching. Sometimes idea comes in my head and I'm like, okay, let me take this out and add this. So it's easier for me to use the pencil and then sketch this out to map out the idea. And then if there's a step back, if there's a changes that I need to do, I did change. If I want to add an addition, I add. That is why I go with a pencil. Some artists just go with a raw brush, sketch with a brush and then back. That is my reason for using the pencil. One of my friends that I met in college, who had already traveled to um, um, Europe, was um, um, ha was already like making name for himself because he went to the Vienna Art Academy. His name is Amwakubov. So I reached out to him and I'm like, "Yo, how is the art market there?" And like he said, "Oh, everything is going on well because he went through the art academy. So he just like gave me an idea what's going on because he was sort of already in the market halfway, so he knew." stuff like that yeah so and i've been looking for galleries to work with but again nobody like will accept my work and stuff so mm. he he then likes like you know what just use instagram as your personal gallery you know do stuff post it out that there are people that watch it all the time so instagram became my like my online gallery
I, I've, I've always loved impasto work. I've always loved to see the movement of brush. It's just the idea of like following the contours and lines of the body shape, the shape of the body and the anatomy and all that. I, it, it almost kind of feel like a redeeming thing for me. And I've always loved that when I went to, when I go to museums and see the old master's painting, everything is just like a stroke, but you step back, it all makes sense. It's just like a puzzle. You, you are close to it and you are seeing all these details and lines and following all this and you step back, everything just merges together and become one image. I, I, I just love the fluidity of it and flow. So as time goes on, it just keeps evolving and evolving. And I ask myself, how more can I add? But at the same time, when it's done, all merges to be one color. Every time I have a show coming up, I come up with a theme and with a theme, I always kind of look for a specific look of people. You have all kinds of people, but we choose a particular person that fit, we feel like he would be a good fit that stands for all of us. So that is how I pick my models. That is how I pick my muse. So I go, I go back home. And the reason why I usually use model back home is that it's a way of me kind of like blending two cultures, using people from my culture back home, but talking about issues that's going on in America. So it's just me blending two cultures, and that's like two homes that I live in.